Uh, every few years, there's always this big controversy in Spain about where is Lorca buried. And uh, they think they find him, and they dig up some part of Granada, and there's this big controversy because some people think that he should be left alone, and others think that he should be found and honored. So uh, that's it. There's some words in Spanish, but I think you can figure it out. It's called Lorca is Green. Federico Garcia Lorca was a poet with deep set eyes and a hood of thick eyebrows. When pressed together, his lips resembled two curved shells. He was a diminutive man who walked with a limp. His hands were delicate and resembled a child's. I see Lorca, his words, but also his body, and what must now only be his disassembled bones. His prettiness and his flaws dissolved to minerals. He is perhaps buried near Granada, where hundreds of men and women were executed by gunshot in 1936, during the Civil War, beside a cemetery wall and its surrounding hillsides and olive trees. Lorca died in summer, four months before the harvest, when the tree's silvered branches were likely heavy with petals and fruit. Some of them are very old, their leaves long threaded by a wind arriving from the sea through a vacant archway, as Lorca wrote, con olor de saliva de niño, de hierba machacada y velo de medusa. It is a wind that attends the living. Lorca is green as the sky at the hour of the crepúsculo, when the moon begins its bright ascent and the sidewalks fall to darkness. Lorca is the shadow green of mangroves and pines, the slash of green beneath the egret's eye. He is the green that enters in silence. He is the green that returns. Lorca was a poet whose work I read out loud and in Spanish to my mother and stepfather. She made Cuban coffee and served it in tiny china cups. He sat at the kitchen counter and noted, kindly, that my pronunciation was better than he had expected. Quite good, in fact. That summer, when my mother's hair had finally grown back after the chemo, her head now dark and budding with curls, I could read espadas and adelpha, but did not know they meant swords and oleander. It is easier to speak than to understand. Spanish, with its velvet-clad consonants and hopeful vowels, each letter sounding exactly as it appears. Nothing is left behind. Nothing is buried. When my mother says my name, her voice rings like a little gold bell, and I think of yellow, a color that, like her, is filled with resolve. Yellow is a window, a locket, a poison that can heal. Yellow is Pinar del Rio, heat and flat valleys and where my mother's people are from. When I was a girl, yellow was the braid she wore long and down the middle of her back. Yellow was the garden of succulents she grew, their branches circuitous, and each leaf's shape a surprise. A paddle, a button, a dagger, a heart. Thank you. <laughs>